Tonight, investigators are focusing on how this man, Anwar al Alaki, may have been a motivation behind the Tennessee shooting spree. In writings examined by the FBI, Abdulaziz, as far back as 2013, wrote he agreed with some parts of the American-born Yemeni cleric's radical teachings. <laughs> al Alaki, the leader of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, was killed by a U.S. drone strike, but has inspired a series of recent terror attacks, including the shooting at Charlie Hebdo in Paris and the Boston Marathon bombings. He was the pre-Twitter uh, inspiration for a lot of different terrorist attacks, someone who would show up again and again in uh, various attacks as being a, a figure who they looked upon as being particularly inspirational and also particularly authoritative. Investigators have also uncovered data found on Abdulaziz's smartphone, showing internet searches as recently as the day before the shooting, questioning whether someone could use martyrdom to atone for sins, like being drunk. The references came at a time when Abdulaziz was coping with losing his job because of drug issues and attempting to hide it from his family. Three months ago, Abdulaziz was arrested and charged with DUI. Police say they noticed a white powder under his nose at the time. Tonight, the FBI is focusing in on the 48 to 72 hours leading up to the shootings, putting together a timeline, interviewing those who came into contact with him, leading up to the point he rented the Mustang convertible to Thursday's attack. So far, investigators have found no communication or coordination with any terror group, but they continue to sort through what has emerged as a complicated and conflicting web of political and religious views. Assuming that Abdulaziz wasn't connected to any group, that's the kind of lone wolf that's very difficult to stop. Someone who doesn't really have traces of communicating with, say, a terrorist operative, someone who isn't acting at a group's behest.